Friday we rolled in from Central Oregon, came over to Eastern Oregon. We had a pretty good uh, feed lined up for some honkers. And it started snowing and it didn't stop snowing. So we had a set up in the snow and it had rained in the city that we were hunting in. So we had rain underneath all the snow, so it was real sloppy. So we had the snow to help us a little bit and the rain to fill this sheet water up a little more, which definitely helped the birds have somewhere to be. Uh, besides that, it's been pretty tough conditions with all the mud and getting out here and setting up, but we got it done. So I grew up in Texas, born and raised. Uh, had a ranch growing up, always hunted waterfowl. Really enjoyed it. Then I moved to West Texas after high school and uh, owned my own outfitter, went to Texas Tech. Did that for about six years and then moved up here to Oregon. Love it up here, it's a total different change of pace, different geese, big honkers, a lot of mallards really have enjoyed it. One of my best friends, uh, Trevor Bennett, has introduced me to a whole lot of cool people this year. Really kind of took me under his wing, showed me some people, and or introduced me to some really cool people that we were hunting. I was hunting with my buddy Austin today and uh, Quentin, which Quentin has been awesome. He's been showing me a ton of different property around here. And he's got me on some really good fields and helped me scout when I'm in Central Oregon. So that's been a huge like benefactor for me this year is having some people in Eastern Oregon watching birds while I'm in Central Oregon and hunting those birds too. So pretty much when we're hunting these geese and the ducks, we're only hunting private land. We're hunting fields mostly. This happens to be a, a cattle field that we're hunting today that just has sheet water in it that the mallards are loving. Yesterday we were hunting another field and it's all private and we've realized that if we hunt private land, we can control the birds a whole lot more, watch our birds and kind of predict what they're gonna do. set up Saturday morning um, in a pasture field. Had a few birds that went around us, but overall we had the birds come in, do it right, right over the dive bombs. And then that afternoon we found a sheet water that was holding roughly about a thousand mallards. And we set up there today. Um, we shot a band, which was awesome, you know. Anytime that happens, it's just lucky. So that was really cool. We ran all dive bombs this whole weekend. Um, running silhouettes is a different, different game for sure. Um, setting a big number, setting big spreads, that's kind of what it's all about. You gotta find the right birds to hunt them for sure and have the right weather. And we did. Um, besides that, it was all good. You know, this we were all trying to have fun. That's what it was for. It's the last day of the season. We're gonna scratch out the last greenheads for this year and uh, look forward to next year. When it comes to waterfowl, to me, it's all about the birds giving it up to you. It's not about birds coming in and looking at stuff. It's when the birds fully commit, put their feet out, and are right about to land, and you call the shot, and you start dropping birds. If you're not shooting them right in the face at 15 yards, you're just not doing it the way I would like to do it. It's not humane, it's not 
like ethical. There's no reason for sky busting. There's no reason to go out there and just let it fly 50 or 60 yards. If you get them at 15, you've won. Checkmate. You've made them do exactly what you predicted them to do. You set the decoys right. You called right. You had the blinds hidden. You knew what they wanted to do, and you, you gave them exactly what they wanted. And if you're not doing it that way, then don't shoot. Wait until you figure it out and you're fine. I mean, you can refine this practice to where the birds do it exactly how you want. And uh, on the sporting side, you know, it's way more sporty to to give, make the birds give it up to you. I mean, it, this is a game of chess to me, and anytime I can make a goose or a duck give it up and I get to call checkmate on them over dive bombs, doesn't get much better. Everyone talks about the grind, and it is a grind, you know? You drive five hours, you get no sleep during the season, you wake up at 3 a.m., you're setting massive spread, and you know, that's the other part of this whole game that, you know, really does it for me, is how hard and how much time you put into this sport. You get better at it, and it's what makes the, the successful hunt so successful, and it makes the hard hunts that hard, and it's the reason why this game will never get dull for me. I mean, it changes and it's a grind. You always want to be better. In this sport, you can always be better. You know, the day you think that you can't be any better at this sport is the day that you should probably quit. Every hunt's fun to me. But every hunt I look back on and I reflect on the moments that I could have changed something to just make the hunt that much more right to me. I mean, it's a game and to do this game right, it's about winning, but more than that, it's about it all coming together, putting in the sleepless nights, you know, driving, scouting, putting the miles on the rig nonstop, and then just the birds doing it. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had bad hunts. But I can't tell you how many times I've had good hunts too. I mean, putting it in, no matter what, you know, just because there's five inches of snow on the road, you're hunting. Just because it's raining out, you're hunting. Just because it's negative 10 out, you're staying out there. You're freezing, you can't feel your hands. Your hands are so cold, you can't feel your fingertips when you're loading your gun. Your calls are freezing up, you're trying to warm them up. I mean, you're doing whatever you can to make the birds do it. The bad hunts, you know, they make the good hunts great. 